Good evening, and welcome to Maundy Thursday services at Trinity Episcopal Church in Fuqua Marina. The opening hymn is Come Labor On. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please make yourself comfortable for the lessons. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it, roasted over the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly, 
It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The psalm is Psalm 78. Verses 14 through 20 and 23 through 25. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all night long with the fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rocks so that the water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread? or provide meat for his people. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat, and he gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is an un in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn this morning is, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord?
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For the, this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than the master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will, know, will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right after the sermon this morning, we're going to wash feet. 
and right after the foot washing, there are some phrases to be read. I want to read the first of them to you today, right now, because I'll read it again at the appointed time, but it is directly related to what I want to say to you today. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I've said so many times that Monday Thursday is my favorite day to preach. Usually, when I preach on Monday Thursday, I focus on the fact that this is the last time in Scripture that we see Jesus alive, healthy, walking on the earth, and talking to his friends. Because right after they have dinner tonight, they're going to go out to pray in the park, and Jesus is going to be arrested. So remember, tomorrow is Good Friday. We are right at that critical moment. Jesus has set an example for us. Let us think for a minute what we know about Jesus. First of all, I would say Jesus is most definitely a leader. A leader. And in this case, he makes it clear that he is a servant leader. Now, a servant leader is something different than a business leader or a government leader or even a leader of the kindergarten class. A servant leader is someone who encourages and helps other people find their place in this great struggle to create the kingdom of God in this place. When I first came to Trinity, I was amazed at all the work that this church did in the community. And still today, even through this pandemic, you continue to do so much good work. So very much good work. And I am not in any way suggesting that that be curtailed. Not for a second. Because most definitely, the first thing that has to happen is that hungry people have to be given food. But I'm sure that you've all heard that little saying about you give a, a hungry man a fish and he'll have dinner tonight. If you give him a fishing pole, he'll have dinner every night. The next step beyond solving those critical problems, those critical I need to eat now problems, the next step is to figure out a way how in this community of Fuquay Verena, people can just afford to buy food. I don't know the answer to how that's going to be. But I do know this. This church is completely full of able, intelligent, creative people who, acting as servant leaders, could possibly spark a movement throughout the whole community to creatively find ways for fewer people to be hungry, for more and more people to find themselves in a position where buying food is not, there is not a choice between paying rent and buying food, or even a choice between buying food and having nothing to eat. I can imagine that given the opportunity, this group of people right here, at Trinity Church have the wherewithal to take their work to a step further, to take their work 
um, into the community in a way that encourages and inspires others to do the same. Because if everybody in this community cared about the hungry and the homeless in this community, they wouldn't be homeless or hungry very much longer. And you have the ability to do that. You have the ability to um, gather together the, the powers, the leaders, the, um, the servant leaders in this community. There are wonderful churches here. I'm sure that they are full of, of um, leaders who could join with you. We all know that there are hungry people here, and I would say that we know that primarily because of the great work that some of you do at the food pantry. But I have heard people in this community say that there are no homeless people here. And when I say in this community, I don't mean in this church. I mean out there in Fuqua Marina. I know that's not true because I have visited them. And I know who they are. And if you gave it a lot of thought, you would know who they are too. A few, just a tiny, tiny percent of them are, are actually have, have emotional disorders that keep them wanting to be out of doors. Those people are not exactly homeless. They are choosing to make their home in the out of doors. Some of them are soldiers who have fought for this country that we all love and have come home so riddled with PTSD that they cannot function. They can't sleep. I can tell you right now, if you cannot sleep, in about three days, you cannot work. We have other soldiers who have returned from the war with physical disabilities, or who have been physically maimed in war on behalf of our country and have come home from that war addicted to opiates. Neither of those two categories are their fault by any stretch of the imagination. And the very idea that they are in such dire straits should make each of our hearts absolutely shrivel. There are also the people who have lost their jobs People who were working people who have lost their jobs in this pandemic because their employer closed. And they haven't been able to find another job because whatever it is they do, if their employer closed, chances are other, people, other employers who hire that kind of specialty or that kind of labor or whatever it is have also closed. There are no programs in this community for the homeless because so many people in this community think there are no homeless here. They live in the woods. Some of them live in their cars. Sometimes whole families are living in their cars. Sometimes those families are afraid to send their children to school because they're afraid that the authorities will discover that they don't have an appropriate home for their child. And that can be the grounds for removing a child from a family. Jesus set an example for us as a servant leader. And all of these amazing servant workers in this congregation have the ability to be servant leaders. In his, um, in his inauguration speech, well, actually in his acceptance speech um, for the nomination, and then again in his inaugural speech, and again when he eulogized his dad um, a couple of years ago when he died, George Bush 
talked about a thousand points of light representing servant leaders who, who can make things happen in their communities. Now, I know a lot of people have made fun of him for saying that. Actually, people have made fun of him for saying all kinds of things, but I know for sure that he was sincere about that. Not just because of the way he, he said it, but because of what he did to follow up on that throughout, throughout time. He's still working on that idea. So for him, it, wasn't, it was no joke whatsoever. It was a serious thought that in this, in this country, thousands and thousands and thousands of servant leaders could make such a difference. And it's equally true that in this reasonably small town of Fuqua Verena, there are servant leaders here as well, many of them in this congregation, but out there as well. If all the servant leaders in this community put their minds, their hearts, their intellects, and their imaginations to work, we could move this community many steps closer to the kingdom of God in this place. Amen. Oh, for the days of acolytes. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace I now leave with you, peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace. I now leave with you, peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your, that name, your name, I'm sorry, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. And the offertory hymn this morning is the servant song. Mm. Let me be as Christ to you. right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to him. 
And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has Christ died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in you. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take it in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed unto your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the, in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Please stay in your seats until we uh, finish the stripping of the altar. Thank you. 